Next presentation by Ms. Erika C. Sibliger. So, my name is Erika Silbiger. I am the Director of Admissions and Enrollment Management at Cardozo School of Law. Um, it is part of Yeshiva University, um, but we are very separate. We're also not even in the same campus. Um, we are located in Manhattan in um, what we call the West Village. Um, have any of you been to New York City before? Nice, okay. Um, what was your favorite part about New York City? I'm sorry? Oh, it's very cool. It lights up with different holidays and things like that, which is very cool. Um, yeah, so it's a, a neighborhood called the West Village. If any of you are familiar with a school called NYU, New York University, it's across the street. So if that helps give you some idea of where we are located. So it is a very active neighborhood. Um, a lot of students, there are several different um, schools in that neighborhood. So the opportunities to network with so many different people, it's endless, right? Um, so I just wanted to mention that because I know a lot of times that when you're you know, shopping around literally you know, for a law school, you will look only at the price, the cost of tuition, right? And I understand that. I did that too, but then when you look at what the value of the school is, for example, do you want to pass the New York State Bar, right? Do you want to work in New York City? Do you want, like, all these different things, right? Choose a school that will allow you to have the career that you want, whether it's Cardozo or not. I just want to say that while you're walking around, talking to the different schools, just make sure that you're not just looking at the cost, that you're looking at the value proposition, right? What will this school do for me and my career? So just want to throw that out there. So there are a number of slides um, on here because this presentation was actually created for um, a different event, so I'm going to speed through a couple of them. Um, so just if I do, apologize. Um, but if there's one, you know, I, I need to stop on, that's fine. Um, but I'm going to, because of the short period of time that I have, I'm going to give you, you know, the basics that I can. Okay. Um, so um, you can see here, so the globalization of legal services. Um, right now, there is, so in terms of the, you know, global market, what are we looking for? What is going on? Um, there is increased demand for dual qualified lawyers, right? Lawyers who have an ad additional experience, not just the basic degrees, right? Like in having an LLM, having two different LLMs. Um, so legal education in the United States, if you're not that familiar, so we have a four-year university degree, but that unfortunately won't allow you to practice law or do really anything except go to another university. <laughs> um, and so that's where the... Um, and that's where the three-year JD comes in, which is the equivalent of your LLB, right? So when you come to the United States and you go to school at one of the LLM programs, you will be sitting in classes with students who have JDs, Juris Doctors. You will also, at Cardozo specifically, be sitting in classes with the current JD students. So a number of schools have the LLM and the JD degrees separate. Your program is separate. Separate classes, separate professors, all those different things. Cardozo, because of how you know, prestigious our faculty members are and the scholarship and what you will be doing in those classes, we combined a number of those classes. So you are actually taking classes with some of the JD students. Um, okay, so this is, this is what I was mentioning before about, you know, taking the New York State Bar. Um, the New York State Bar, um, it is possible for you guys to take the bar, um, and an LLM degree is what's going to get you there. Now, you can technically take the bar on very rare occasions. You can take the bar without an LLM, 
but it's not suggested <laughs> um, because of how challenging that would be in some of the other things that go along with it. Um, so getting the LLM degree, and especially from Cardozo, allows you to have that, to go through that process um, to be able to pass the New York State Bar. So again, like I was saying before, what is your goals, right? To have a specific job and or to pass the bar, right? Go to a school that will allow you to do that. Our curriculum is geared towards, is designed towards allowing you to pass the bar. We have a 90-90% bar passage rate in New York State, which is huge considering the New York State bar is the hardest bar in the United States to pass. So if you can pass the New York State bar, you are golden, right? <laughs> you are good to go, It'll rule the world. Um, and like I said, 90%. So um, let's say that's not your goal. Okay, fine, go to a school, like I said, that will help you towards your career goals, okay? Okay, so I literally just said all that, so I'm gonna. <laughs> Um, so those of you who I have met in the other room already, um, I kind of went down this line for you. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the Innocence Project, but that, but Cardozo is, um, this is the birthplace of that project, um, which I would love to chat with you more about um, later. Okay. And so these are the options that we have at Cardozo. The Juris Doctorate degree, the JD, which like I said, is already the equivalent of your LLB, so slightly redundant. Um, Masters in Law, the LLM. Um, we also have a transfer LLM to JD option. And a JSD, which is a doctorate, right? Um, that one, we do not, we admit only like three students, three JSD students per year. So I wouldn't really focus too much on that. And then visiting research scholar options. Okay, so our four main programs that we offer, intellectual property, dispute resolution and advocacy, general studies, comparative legal thought. Now this does not mean these are the only, um, only ones that we offer, right? Only concentrations that we offer. The general studies concentration allows you to, what I like to say, choose your own adventure, right? So you, you apply for general studies, which you can change your mind during the application process, that's fine. You don't, you don't apply directly to a concentration. Um, so you can, you can switch, you can change your mind. So you apply to general studies, and then you are given a list of courses that once you take your core courses, the ones that, you, that allow you to take the bar, right, you then pick your, what we call electives, to create a concentration. So when you say to me, what are your concentrations, I'll say, you let me know, right? So choose one. Um, some more, uh, this, these are, right, like I said, some of the options for the general studies um, concentrations. Um, I had been asked about um, criminal law as well, corporate law, um, a number of those other programs. So these are just um, a small portion of those. Um, I already mentioned that, um, mentioned that. Um, so this is actually a picture of outside the building. I just thought it would be kind of cute to show you guys. <laughs> So I know it's kind of small, so, oh well, can't really see it. But nice yellow, yellow taxi cab over there, the iconic New York. Um, this is one of our classes at the New York Stock Exchange. So these pictures are just to show you some of the things that our students are doing, working at Google in New York. Um, we do have partnerships with Google and, and other um, types of companies like that. Um, Covington Burlington LLP, which is huge. Um, the U.S. Attorney's Office, big, not a big deal, right? <laughs> okay, so now, importantly, our faculty, right? Brilliant, passionate, um, depth of theoretical knowledge, very, very high level academic experience. These professors have taught all over the world. They are credentialed almost all over the world. Um, they are some of the smartest, brightest, you know, most fantastic faculty members that you will ever meet. They're, the, the Cardozo's kind of 
thing, for lack of a better word, our thing is to be innovative. So we're not going to just teach you the basics of these types of law, right? We're going to show you in real time with current events how, you know, let's say patent law taking um, the iPhone and the Samsung phone, where is there a patent issue there, right? There is. <laughs> and so the professor will go through that current event with you and show you or even ask you what you think about this issue. Um, so that's the type of curriculum that we offer, hands-on, also theoretical, also practical, wrapped into one. Professor Felix Wu, some of you might have already met him or heard from him. Um, these, this is his area of expertise. I had been asked um, about this previously, so I wanted to just quickly sh show you who the professors are. Um, we have Julie Souk. This, these are her areas of expertise. Um, this, we have another professor. Um, okay, so those are just some of our, you know, main uh, main professors. Um, and let me know whenever my, I haven't didn't time it, so let me know whenever my time's up. <laughs> um, okay. So here is an example of your IP stands for obviously intellectual property. So here are some of your options. So you were saying, you know, before, oh, I want to do privacy law. I want to do sports law, um, media law, um, international copyright, IP business and transaction, copyright in music industry. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Um, so again, if I you know, chatted with you earlier over there, we have a number of clinics, which is what which is called um, or experiential learning, which which is we call clinics. Clinics are very competitive. Um, they allow you hands-on experience in the field, working with very um, um, prestigious organizations, law firms, you know, things like that. So it is a little challenging to get a clinic if you can get one go for it, but we do also have, uh, here are some of the clinics, so if you are, if you are interested in doing one of the clinics. Um, and then we have field clinics and externships. These you can also apply for as well, if, and like, whether you got into one of the clinics or not. And the good thing about these is they happen throughout the year. Um, and so if you don't get into one of the clinics, you know, apply for one of these. If you don't get into one of these clinics, apply when it comes back around. We strongly encourage you to do a clinic, field clinic, or externship while in the program. Um, so if you can do that, please definitely do. And like I mentioned, here are some of the, um, ex some information about the externships. And I can, again, go through that with you guys. Um, some more of those options. So this room, um, it's kind of hard to see, but this room is a um, direct replica of a courtroom in the United States. And it is on the first floor of our building. So we have a direct replica of a courtroom. And these students are doing a mock trial um, in that courtroom. So you can see you know, the jury you know, on the side. You can see them coming up to you know, make a motion. And you can see the fake judge, right? So that's the kind of classes we have as well, where you're doing, again, hands-on um, um, hands things. Um, OK. Just gonna skip through a couple of them. Um, so career opportunities, so you can work uh, part-time while you're in the program, um, it is an option. You also are allowed a one-year, what we call OPT, which is to work full-time um, when the pro program is over. Um, but we do also have a, a dedicated career services department where they will help you as best as they can to network and find a job. They will not find a job for you, I guarantee you that. <laughs> but they will help you make connections. They will have programs um, and speakers come in onto campus so that you can then network with those people and uh, make connections to then um, have a job offer afterwards. Um, so one of the things, again, that I was saying before about value proposition, so with Cardozo, you have 
access to information and invaluable resources. We have a huge law library, electronic jobs banks, um, professionals who take active role in shaping your future, right? So dedicated professionals to helping you become a law professional. Um, so here is what the tuition was in 2017, 2018, so we need to update this. Um, so like I said before, it is an expensive program, right? And I, I don't think the dollar sign, I don't think that's meant to be a dollar sign, that's meant to be rubies. <laughs> um, so just ignore the dollar sign. Um, that is for, um, that, that is the, oh no, I'm sorry, excuse me, that is not, that is the scholarship awarded, so I was looking at the wrong side. That is the scholarship that we have awarded to LLM. Um, I'm gonna do, tell me what that is, so that you can see. Um, let's see, okay, so 201.4 lat. That is the amount of scholarship money that we awarded to LLM students in 2017-2018. So I bring that up because it is, the program is uh, pricey, but Again, the value proposition versus the cost. Look at the LLM one-year program as an inv investment. Okay, if I'm not already over my time, um, does anyone have any questions? I'm that good, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, cool, thank you all so much. Um, I'll be right over there if you have any questions and wanna chat. Have a good day, guys. <laughs>